Welcome back. I thought of the word that I was trying to think of at the end of the last one. We're going to look at more advanced techniques with exponential functions. That was what I was trying to say. So let's look at an example such as, um, let's say y equals eight. Oh, let's not do eight. We've been doing eight a bit. Let's do five to the power of x cosine x. And if I ask you to differentiate this, if I ask you to differentiate this, I see that we need to use the product rule. So now that we've come up with the rule for 5 to the power of x, we don't need to try to rewrite this equation in the form of a natural log. If we did, things would get really, really ugly fast. So instead of trying to rewrite this in logarithmic form, we're going to use that, that generalization that we came up with in the last video. So finding the derivative of this would require the product rule. So the derivative of 5 to the power of x is 5 to the power of x times the natural log of 5. So that's the derivative of the first term times the second without changing anything, so times cosine x plus 5 to the x unchanged times the derivative of cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. I want you to avoid writing it like this. Because think about it from my shoes, that looks like you're saying 5 to the power of x minus the sine of x. Instead, put some parentheses around it, please. Um, you're going to see this simplified in the book and on multiple choice questions. I notice that both of these terms have a 5 to the power of x in common. So if I factor out a 5 to the power of x, I'm left with the natural log of 5 times the cosine of x minus the sine of x. Okay, that wasn't an advanced technique, but still just something that you need to think about, something you need to to wonder about. Okay, but what if the exponent is not just x? What if I gave you something that was a little bit more complicated, like it's not right with the highlighter. Why, like f of x equals 4 to the x squared minus 3x. I hope that you have a, a conjecture for this. If you don't have a conjecture, then what I'd recommend is you rewrite it in logarithmic form. And in fact, even if you have a conjecture, I want you to write it in logarithmic form, and I want you to try to find the derivative that way to verify your conjecture. So in other words, I want you to write this as the natural log of y equals x squared minus 3x times the natural log of 4. I'd like you to try differentiating this and see if your conjecture was the same. Okay, pause the video. Go give it a try, please. Okay, I hope you actually tried it. We're going to find the derivative of this left side. The derivative of the left side is y prime over y, or dy over dx over y. On the right side, we can use the product rule if you want. It's probably not a bad idea for something that looks big. So if I find the derivative of the first, that's 2x minus 3 times the natural log of 4 plus x squared minus 3x. And then the derivative of the natural log of 4 would just be 0. Okay, so it's still that natural log of 4 is just a constant. You wouldn't have had to use the product rule because the derivative of that constant is just 0. But still, it feels good to be sure. If I move the y over to the other side, I now get y times 2x minus 3 times the natural log of 4. But don't just leave y in your answer y prime equals, I'm going to move that down one so I have some space, y prime equals, and we replace y with 4 to the power of x squared minus 3x, that's what y was originally, 
and then times 2x minus 3, and times the natural log of 4. Okay, I see parts that make sense. We've seen this before. Here's itself. That's the original function, just like we did up above. The derivative of 5 to the power of x is 5 to the power of x, and then times the natural log of 5. So here's that other part. Here's the a to the power of thing, and here's the natural log of a. What is this? Where did this come from? And maybe you've already conjectured this is the derivative of the inner function, if you will. x squared minus 3x, in this case, is the inner function. So we need to use the chain rule. So this is the derivative of the inner function. OK, chain rule. So we find the derivative of the outer, which is the 4 to the power of, the a to the u part. And then we multiply by the derivative of that inner. So let's generalize this. If we find the derivative of anything that is a to the power of u, u being the inner function of some kind. Pause, generalize. What would be that derivative for any exponential function? I hope you're actually pausing these. Because really, it's good for you to try. In class, I would make you try. So I need you to get that experience of really thinking it through without waiting for me to tell you. So I hope you actually are. So in this case, we would have a to the u, so it would be itself. We would still have that ln a like we did before. But the only other additional step in this case is the chain rule. So we just have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. All right, let me show you two kind of cool cases, two special cases, if you will. The first one is one of my favorites. If we find the derivative of e to the x, for example, this is one of my favorites. e is still a constant, just like if we had 3 to the power of x or 5 to the power of x e is still a constant. It's 2.71828. So we're still finding the derivative like we did on every other problem so far. So applying this, we would say that y prime is itself times the natural log of the base times the derivative of the exponent. Okay, times 1 is just 1, but do you know what the natural log of e is? The natural log of e is 1. So this ends up being e to the x times 1 times 1, which means that the derivative of e to the x is itself. It really is itself. So if you were to graph e to the x and then try to graph the derivative of e to the x, it would be the identical graph. No difference at all. And that's because the natural log of e, the natural log of that base, is 1. Kind of cool interesting to think about. Okay, let me show you one other example and then I'm going to stop chattering away. Um, if I gave you a problem like this, this does not follow any of the other examples that we've had so far. Um, the power rule, it's x to the power of a constant. The exponential rule, it's a constant to the power of x. Well, in this case, it's x to the power of x. So we're going to have to use some different techniques to make this one happen. Let's go back to the way we started this day and take the natural log or apply the natural log to both sides of this equation. So this is the natural log of y equals x times the natural log of x. So we'll just bring the frog off the log. So now what you can do is take the derivative of each side. So we'll differentiate this equation. Natural log of y is y prime over y. I'm going to take up a little more space this time. x times the natural log of x, none of those are constants, so we actually have to use the product rule in this case. We find the derivative of x, that's 1, times the natural log of x without changing it, plus x times the derivative of the natural log of x. The derivative of the natural log of x is u prime over u. 
So this would be 1 over x. Okay, if I simplify that left or that right side, I get the natural log of x. And if I do x times 1 over x, that's just 1. Okay, isolating the y prime, I'm going to multiply by y on both sides. And then I can't just leave y in the answer, so I'll do the substitution with the original. So I get the natural log of x plus 1 times x to the power of x. Interesting. It's kind of cool. Natural logs are helpful because natural logs and exponentials are inverses of each other. They help each other out quite a bit. Okay, I'm going to let you get at it. I'm going to stop talking. Thanks for exploring this with me.